Okay, so today I will talk about TPU client next, which is a new client side implementation for the TPU traffic. Um, so basically, TPU means transaction processing unit, and it drives block creation when a validator is a leader. And the TPU traffic is currently um, is over quick protocol, and historically it was uh, using UDP protocol. So if someone, a client, needs to send his transactions to the validator, uh, he needs to create a part uh, of his client implementation, which is called TPU client. It's a network layer, which will be responsible for sending transactions over the network. And uh, TPU client will take serialized transactions and send them um, using quick streams to the validator. Um, also, TPU client is part of the validator. So it's used in two particular use cases. The first one is when validator sometimes needs to forward the traffic it received from the TPU um, server to the following leader. And in this case, it receives it uh, normally, but then decides to forward using TPU client implementation that is of choice. Another use case is using um, if the validator uses RPC uh, flag. So in this case, it receives JSON RPC traffic and then sends this uh, using another TPU client of choice to the uh, future leader. The previous client side TPU implementation is called Connection Cache. And it was developed to support both Quick and UDP. And this partially explains the complexity of this implementation. So how to send transactions using connection cache? First, a uh, user needs to get addresses of the future uh, leaders. And then for each of these addresses, he needs to uh, find the connection uh, in the connection cache using get connection call. And then using this connection, he or she can send the transaction batch using send data batch async. And the connection uh, get connection call in internally We'll try to find the peers pool in the uh, in the map, which is um, is part of the connection cache implementation. And then, if this pool doesn't exist, it will create a new pool, which means it will create a new endpoint. Or if this uh, endpoint existed, it will try to it will check if connection uh, for this peer exists, and then if not, will create a new connection. And for the call send data batch async, it will acquire log on semaphore and then it will send, it will create a new Tokyo task to send uh, this batch of transactions. Okay, so what is the motivation for the new implementations? Basically that our connection cache is using internal Tokyo queue of futures. Um, uh, for example, in this send data batch async and we have no control over the size of this um, queue. And uh, inside of the validator, we also have a warm-up logic um, for this for all the connections in the connection cache, which uh, leads to sending empty packets. Um, and then if we talk about the implementation side, connection cache internally uses um, synchronization uh, mechanics with semaphores and uh, read-write logs. Uh, I think it can be avoided. Also, we would like to resolve long-standing issues with the endpoint management and some API drawbacks, such as um, connection cache creates Tokyo runtime internally instead of taking their own time from, uh, from the user. So that's why we created a new client side implementation, which is called TPU client next. So how to send transactions with a TPU client next? Um, on the user side, we have a sender it's, which is a sender part of the Tokyo channel. And uh, we can call sender.send or sender.trysend, uh, depending on the needs. So um, from the user perspective, a TPU client next um, is primarily this connection worker scheduler structure, which takes a receiver part of the channel and configuration. Um, beside of that, it can be customized with a custom broadcast strategy and uh, leader updater implementation. And uh, and also it returns stats. So user can use 
his own matrix or database of choice, not only in FluxDB. And uh, let's talk about the internal design of the TPU client next. Um, design is agent-based where tasks communicate using channels. The key design decision is that one connection is handled by one uh, worker task. These tasks communicate with scheduler by channels. So when transaction is received by scheduler, it is uh, broadcasted to the workers according to the send final configuration. And by design, it's impossible that we send transactions using <clears throat> multi-streaming, thus preventing traffic fragmentation. For connection cache, it's possible. Another important aspect is that we create connections before using them, thus hiding the latency of uh, connection opening. So where else this uh, typical next might be used? Um, obvious, um, obviously it can be used for other RPC implementations, or it can be used for any other client side code that need to send TPU transactions. Uh, for example, we use it inside the new stress testing tool transaction bench, it's, it's internal tool, um, which uh, is aimed to replace bench TPS for stress testing um, the cluster. And it shows, uh, transaction bench shows, uh, shows that it can generate twice more traffic than the bench TPS. So typically next is uh, configurable. The first way to configure it is using the config structure, which has different parameters, uh, in particular uh, worker channel size and uh, max reconnection terms and others. But most importantly, it has the uh, fan out. And we have two, in fan out, we have two um, attributes. One is send and another one is connect. Basically send is to how many future leaders we will send the transaction batch. And connect means um, to, uh, to how many future leaders we will create connections. And this value should be a little bit bigger than for send so that we hide the latency of creating new connections. Um, then user can also provide his own custom leader updater uh, implementation, which is used inside TPU Client Next to find the future leaders. The default implementation is the same as used in uh, programs like uh, Bench TPS, which is internally using RPC and WebSockets to uh, get slot information and, uh, and so on. But inside the validator, we, we have a POH, for instance, that's why we have a custom implementation um, relying on it. And yeah, any other custom implementation is uh, possible. And finally, there is a workers broadcaster trait which controls how we broadcast these uh, transaction batches over uh, the workers. Because each of the workers, as I said, has its own channel. And uh, the default strategy is we do it using try send. But this means that uh, in some situation, it might happen that all the workers uh, have full channels and then this transaction batch will be dropped. So we have a custom implementation that instead of doing try send, does send. So we create a back pressure for, uh, for, in the, for example, in the stress testing tool. Um, so we don't generate more transactions than we are able to send. Um, as I said, inside of the validator, um, it's used in a centralization service and forwarding stage. And we did some uh, testing on the uh, with the RPC, and we observed that on the test net, and we observed that the TPS for uh, connection cache is slight, slightly lower than for TPU client next, but more importantly, the jitter is smaller for TPU client next. So there is a screenshot showing how many um uh, send attempts uh has been done on the central transaction service side and um, we see that the traffic generated by, by typical next uh, version is smoother um and another thing is that we observe that sometimes all the connection test uh, cache cont uh, continuous sending uh transactions we don't see them on the replay stage so for instance here on the bottom stats for connection cache and at the end there is some um we can see the, the 
there is some traffic, but we don't see this in the replay uh, stage. Probably it has been filtered due to expired block hashes or something just because of the, the way it uses um, Tokyo. And then we did similar experiments for forwarding stage uh, and found that it uh, typically next implementation is able to forward 10% more uh, than um, an action cache one and also less jitter. At the same time, CPU load for forwarding was 30% lower and it might be attributed to the fact that we have used um, runtime with two, uh, worker, um, two workers basically, instead of the default one for connection cache, which, which is using number of workers, the same as number of CPUs. So the summary, so it's a async friend legend based design. You can use your own runtime, you can configure it, it's well documented and uh, creates more consistent traffic with less jitter and uses less resources on the host and in the network. And um, yeah, I would like to invite developers of Iris to talk about this, about their experience with that. If they're here, I see, okay, yeah, I see. So you can take the word if you, if you wish. Hey guys, can you guys hear me? Yes. Just check. Okay, hey, uh, Sujit here from uh, Astralin. Uh, thanks, Grill, for the lovely presentation. So just to give a quick intro, we run, uh, Astralin runs a trading middleware designed for HFT shops, market makers, and a lot of trading bots building on Solana. And uh, one of our main products is a transaction broadcaster. Uh, we essentially aggregate over custom stake routes, GTO, as well as TPU client implementations like Paladin, for example. And um, we do quite a lot of like performance improvements on our middleware. So we check out quite a lot of the code and the PRs that uh, you guys are pushing out. And um, when we were checking out some multiplexing stuff over quick, we came across Alessandro's PR and some of his tweets as usual. And uh, we immediately decided to try out the TPU next client. And was we did see quite a lot of uh, difference in performance when we were benching it. So we pushed it out to production. Um, that was a game changer for us. This was back in November, December, I guess, last year, um, we saw like a 70 percentage increase in our transaction landing rates, um, which was quite significant for us. And, but just to give you a rough picture, roughly on a day-to-day -day basis, we do uh, half a million transactions per day, uh, just to give a rough count. And um, probably another thing that we also noticed is that uh, we saw very fewer dropped transactions around 40 to 50 percentage to be precise, um, mostly due to like connection failure issues. I guess, as Kirill mentioned, this might be because of the reduction in jitter. Uh, we did have to tweak a bit of the configuration rules to get this to perfect out, but um, Alessandro had helped us quite a lot with that. Um, I guess also another thing that we loved about the crate is that it's like quite modular enough. Um, we were working on a blacklisting uh, feature at that point where we don't send to a certain set of leaders. So there was quite a lot of support within the crate to be able to do something like that. So um, overall, we have had quite a lot of good experience uh, working with this implementation. We do think uh, it could be the default one on the client. Uh, I know we don't do quite a lot of size as much as the other RPC providers on Solana, but we do have like extensive metrics set up on our routers internally. Um, we have around 10 million soul worth of stake on our uh, routers as well. Um, and if, if required, we're happy to share like performance metrics as well, run like uh, metrics against connection cache also if required in prod. Thank you, thank you for the feedback. Um, yeah, at the end, I would like to acknowledge the work of Alessandro in particular because the basic idea of that, uh, that one task response to one worker task response to one connection is, was from him also. He gave a lot of other suggestions about the code. Also, I would like to say thank you to Ilya, Alex and Brennan for reviewing all the PRs and providing uh, changes in the code and suggestions and so on. And to Mango folks, uh, Gutnot Galaxus and Groovy Germanicus 
uh, with whom I had a fr uh, fruitful discussions about um, TPU client next and networking in general. And also thanks for any many others who reviewed this code um, over the last months. Yeah, that's all. So any questions on that? Yeah, it looks like no questions. So um, yeah, we can yeah we can stop here. I think that's that's okay. There is a chart. Uh, good. Thank you. Okay.